So we're going to be talking about setup time today. And as you can see from the definition, setup is the amount of time the signal must arrive at the destination register be, uh, to, be pop, uh, to be properly sampled. Um, basically, what we're looking at here is we have a launch edge. That launch edge occurs in the source flip-flop. And the arrival is at the setup flip, is at the destination flip flop. So we have basically a source clock here, and the destination clock as our reference point. So what we're going to talk about is when the clock arrives, we must be stable some setup time before. So what we think about here is we say the clock arrives at say 20 nanoseconds, and our setup requirement time is 5 nanoseconds. We have a data required time of 15 nanoseconds. Now what does that mean? That means we have 15 nanoseconds to get from the clock to out through the data or combinational logic to the flip-flop. We must arrive there 5 nanoseconds early and that is called the data required time. Now let's look at an example here um, where we look at the setup time. And actually, we're going to calculate the setup time of the circuit. Um, there's, an, there's a setup time we referred to in the previous slide. That is the intrinsic setup time. Uh, that is basically the characteristic or the, the parameters of the flip-flop itself. We're going to look at the setup time from an input, from an input to register perspective. And what we're looking at here is there is some associated data delay that our input must go through, and then there's a clock delay. And then we have our intrinsic setup time. So what that means is, we, we our data must arrive sometime before the next clock edge to meet the intrinsic setup time. Okay. Well, what that what happens is the clock delay shifts out when we have to arrive. So it actually works in our favor. So taking some example parameters here, we have 1.5 nanoseconds of data delay, a 1 nanosecond clock delay, and an intrinsic hold retirement requirement of 0.5 nanoseconds. So we see here that we have a setup requirement of 1 nanosecond for this circuit. Continuing down the same road, we're going to actually use a different terminology now. So we're going to we're going to sort of make this more formal. We're going to call what we've been talking about the required stability time. So what that is is it's actually relative to the clock edge. So it's going to be the destination clock edge. So what we're talking about here is when does this clock arrive at what time? So at 20 nanoseconds, at 50 nanoseconds, it's 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 actually we're, we're looking at this in terms of what nanosecond does this arrive? It's not a delay. It's actually relative to time zero. So we're going to say this signal maybe arrives at 23 nanoseconds, and it, there's a destination clock path delay of of three nanoseconds. Let's just say it takes three nanoseconds for that clock signal to propagate all the way to this flip flop or one nanosecond to propagate here. And then we subtract the setup. So what we're looking at here is based on when the clock arrives and based on our setup, we must be stable some time before that clock edge. So we'll take an example of this and hopefully it'll make more sense. So here's sort of an artificial example where we look at we have our clock period plus our clock network delay. And what we do is we subtract our setup requirement from that. So let's look at that picture. So we have our clock insertion point here. There is some clock network delay, some delay for the clock to arrive at the destination flip-flop. And we must basically have our combinational logic stable some setup time before the next clock edge. So let's take a look at how that works. So we have our source flip-flop has a clock to queue delay and then it has a combinational logic delay. So as you can see
there's this much time left over before it has to be stable for it to meet the setup requirement. That is called setup slack. So let's put some of these terms together. We've talked about the required, required stability time, uh, which is basically when do we need to be stable by minus the actual data arrival. So we're going to do this example here given some fixed parameters so that perhaps we can visualize it a little better. So as you can see here, we have our the maximum time in which our clock will arrive. So what that means is what is the latest possible time that our source flip-flop will see that clock? Okay, plus some finite delay. Now let's just assume there's a buffer on that clock path. Let's say how what's the fastest that buffer can toggle? Why the fastest? Because if our source flip-flop gets there faster uh, or receives a clock faster, that means our destination flip-flop has less time to meet the, the setup requirements. So what happens here is we're trying to calculate the worst condition possible. So in setup, it's our, our source clock, I mean our, our source basically running is uh, having the slow, uh, the smallest clock buffer and the latest the clock can arrive. Now the clock arrives here and so what happens is our data signal. Our data signal propagates from the source flip-flop to the destination flip-flop. Let's follow that path. So there's going to be some finite max data delay. Again, this is arbitrary, but let's think of this in our in our minds as the clock to queue plus the data plus the uh, combinational logic. So what we're seeing here is 13 nanoseconds of clock to queue plus combinational logic makes our data path delay. So that means that our final result arrives at the destination flip-flop at 15 nanoseconds. Now, our destination clock actually occurred at 20.02 nanoseconds plus the clock buffer delay. So it arrived at around uh, 20.520 nanoseconds. We were only required to be stable by 20.474 nanoseconds. We were required to be stable only some finite period before this clock actually arrived. As you see, we were stable here. We were required to be stable here. We beat it by four by 5.468 nanoseconds. So what that means here is we exceed the timing requirements of this design. And we could actually increase our clock frequency or do more in this combinational logic area. So, just a quick summary is that not all paths take the entire clock period. So we have positive slack. And then there are paths that basically cannot be solved during the entire clock period. Those are negative slack. So if we have something that's negative slack, it's not meeting the timing requirement. If we have something that's positive slack, it's meeting the timing requirement. So let's think about this here. It's the required time, our clock period. We have the entire clock period to meet the timing requirements minus the longest actual time. So our combinational plus our clock to out plus our setup minus the clock skew tells us the longest actual path in our design. Okay, and so what that means is if there's any value left over that's positive, we meet timing and we have room to spare.